Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melted Production, and today I want to show you how you can do some editing, importing, exporting of wavetables in M Sound Factory. Uh, somewhat recently, this got some updates, and now I think it's easier than ever to do this, and I'll show you how. I won't make this too long, I'll try to go quickly. So what we have here is we just have a default instance of M Sound Factory. We're going to open this. I'm going to use Wavetable 256. The reason I'm using this is because I don't know how large the wavetables are going to be. Uh, the smaller ones like Wavetable 8, I believe will use, I think it's less memory. But uh, since we don't know how long, large it's going to be, let's use the largest one. We open it up, we see something like this. I'll uh, play it. If we scan through this wave here, we can interpolate between them. Now I have the interpolate between waves on. If you turn that off, it'll kind of skip between them. You can set that however you want. It depends on you. For this demonstration, let's use an LFO. I'll turn this here. Make sure the LFO isn't going too fast. Maybe this speed's okay. And that's just to show you, you know, what's happening. Let's pop this out by clicking here. Make it a little bit larger so we can see everything, or almost everything. And we can see the waves here. I'll show you something that maybe you couldn't do before. Before you could always do this, and you could open this up and change this, etc. But now it's very easy to actually import waves in here. So if we have single cycles like this wherever on your computer just take this and drag it on whichever slot you want one two three four up to you know whatever you have so let's put this on one and you see it instantly changes it and we can do the same thing let's move this one to four maybe and now it's really easy to add these uh, simply if you're thinking, you know what, I don't like that, or I put this in the wrong place, or ah, what am I going to do? Right click this here, and we can insert an empty slot to the left or right. We can move this left, like that, and it switches it around. We can move it back right, however, and that's an easy way to do some simple editing. Now, one of the other things we could do here that's very important is resetting it to what it was before. It'll reset it to a you know, saw wave. Uh, we can delete it, so instead of four waves, we're going to have three, like that. Or we can reset it. Actually, I already showed you the reset, sorry. Uh, the most important one is the export. So you're thinking, like, why would I want to do this? In some cases, you probably don't. It's not important. But let's say I had a custom wave like this. I go in here, and I move this around. I come up with something really cool, and maybe I want to use this in another synthesizer. I want to share it with my friend, etc. All I have to do is just go in here, find whichever slot it is, right click it, and click export here, and I can use this like a test wave or something. Okay. Reset. If I look back here, I have this test wave, I just drag and drop it. There we go. We have exactly what I drew on there. And like I said, you don't actually have to draw it. If you're wondering like, hey, the custom sample depth, if I do this now, it doesn't change anything. Make sure you turn the custom sample depth off and it'll change it back. And you could do the same thing instead of drawing it with custom. You could come in here and start using harmonics or whatever you want to create your own you know, specific shape and then export that as a single cycle. So that's a new feature that I think is really cool. If you didn't know this, I believe I showed this before, but I'll show it again. You can import a wavetable if you're like, I don't want to spend all my time editing like this. Go in here, we're going to find our wavetables, just whichever one you want. Uh, let's try 44, I guess. You can change the wavetable length. I believe the standard default is uh, the 2048, which I believe most wavetables will use. So I'm going to use that like this. And it'll import it and it will set the number of waves for you automatically like this. Let's play through it. So that's an easy way to import a single wavetable. But I know if you're like me, you're like, hey, I have like a whole folder here full of wavetables. I don't want to do this one by one. It's going to take forever. We now have the batch import. <clears throat> I believe I showed this on a previous video. The only thing that's changed really is now 
you can select the preset name of the folder. So that way, before I showed you how you like, ah, you have to, you know, move these things around, make a folder, move these things around, delete them. You don't have to do that anymore. Just set the wavelength, set the name of the base of the wavetables you want. In this case, I'll name like base tables. Let's put volume two. Click OK. It's going through them all and it will import all of them for you. Now we should have them all in here and we can go in and just look where is it? Base table volume two and we can import whatever we want. Now we have all of these at our disposal and it didn't take much time. So this way, if you have those big packs and you think like, oh, I don't want to spend, you know, all this time doing it one by one for, you know, 30 different wave tables, you can just easily do these, you know, while you're watching a YouTube video or something, preferably my YouTube videos. This is an easy way to import them and export them. Let me show you uh, one or two more things. Let's see if I can find a good. So I have this wavetable and one of the great things about uh, let's say this is you can export it. So if I wanted to use this on, let's say, a different one, instead of exporting a single wave, we can now export the whole wavetable like this. Click the export button and we'll just call this whatever vocal thing like that. Cool. And we should have it. Out here, vocal thing, which we can use in another synthesizer, which I'll show you. If you don't believe me, uh, you, you sure this works in another synthesizer? Let me show you. So, have another synthesizer here. We have a wavetable already in there. Move the index. For this one, it's easy. Just take this and put it in there. Boom. See, easy to import your wavetable in there. One thing that is sometimes troublesome and I'll try to go over quickly is you want to use this transform here to change, let's say, pulse width modulation. Let's hook that up to an LFO. Use the same one so it moves at the same rate. So I want that in there. I like that pulse width modulation. But if I export it from here, it's not going to catch any of that. <clears throat> so you might be wondering, like, how do I, you know, get it to work with this transform? Or in some cases, you might want to use like some effects or something with it, too. Usually you don't. But let's say you did or you want to use a filter. You can actually capture that, but it's a little bit more difficult. So we have the transformation here. We're going to go to the FX and we're just going to record it as a WAV file. Luckily, there is a built-in recorder. We'll put it here. Look at the path. Let's put it wavetables right here. And let's call it um, transform thing. Okay. And instead of going with the LFO, which is going back and forth, let's instead just use... Ooh, sorry about that. Uh, well, not envelope. Let's use attack one. So this will go from the bottom to the top just once. And we'll do the same thing with the pulse width, pulse width modulation. Sorry. Uh, back one. There we go. Let's listen to it first. Probably too fast. Slow it down a little bit. If you think that sounds good, what we're going to do is just go to the recorder, hit record, play it. Okay. Now, hopefully that worked. It recorded everything. You should be able to see it here. Transform thing. Uh, well, actually, we can play it here as a way. Actually, we don't need to. So we'll go in here and I will just import it. But instead of doing the normal import, because it's a wave file and not a wave table, we're going to use the analyze audio file here. Actually, let's turn this off. 
use analyze audio file, find it on our desktop, wherever it is, transform thing, click OK. And now we find the beginning points as close as we can. You can zoom in if you want by using your wheel on your mouse. And the end point there, you can click the number of waves. You can do as many as you want. Sometimes I find like, oh, using more is better. Sometimes I find actually using more is worse. It defaults at 20. Uh, let's try 48. I don't know why I like that number, but do this and we'll analyze it. And you see, it, it's like, what's going on? Why does it look like there's barely anything there? If we play it, I kind of hear it, but it's really soft. So what we're going to do is go to process and we're going to put normalize on. Now that seems pretty good. That's basically what I want. Uh, if there's anything I think, ah, maybe it's too long, maybe the last one or two or too many, so I'm just going to go in here and maybe delete a few of them like this. And I might think, oh, that's good. If you think that's good, all you have to do is just pop this back out, go into here, and save it. Hopefully with a name that's different than Coke's Toilet. So, there you go. There you have it, and that way you can get that transform information in there to create your own wavetable and just put it, you know, you know, in back and forth. If you don't use that, it's much easier to just use these, but in case you're wondering, like, hey, I want to use this transform, or I want to use some other filters in here, or I want to use some effects, you can try that. Although I would warn you that sometimes the effects don't work so well with the wavetable, but you'll see yourself. So... Hopefully this gave you some ideas of things you can do and all the new features that will make your life much easier and it will speed up your workflow. If you have any questions, leave those down below. Give me a thumbs up and check out all the other plugins at MelterProduction.com. Till next time, see you.